Heavenly Father, we ask a blessing on the reading of your word. May your Holy Spirit be our guide today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Picking up in Philippians 2, 22. We'll finish up Philippians today. But ye know the proof, you know the proof of him. As a son with the father, he has served with me in the gospel. He's sending them Timothy. Timothy was a faithful pastor pastor in the church of Ephesus. Uh, He did minister to at least five of the New Testament churches. Um, Philippians uh, 1, you know, when we started that, it said, Paul and Timotheus, the servants of Jesus Christ, all the saints in Christ Jesus, which are at Philippi. Now, so Timothy's being sent. Let's look at Hebrews 13, 23. It says, ye Know ye that our brother Timothy is set at liberty, with whom, if he come shortly, I will see you. You know, he was imprisoned at some point for the gospel, as was Paul. See, Timothy at some point was thrown in prison as well, but he was set free, set at liberty. Verse 23, him therefore I hope to send presently as soon as I shall see how it will go with me. See, it's unclear how Paul, if he's going to be released, we talked about that earlier in Philippians 1, would he be released or would he be executed? Uh, Philippians 1, 19, it says, for I know that this shall turn to my salvation through your prayer. The salvation there he's speaking of is a physical salvation he's hoping for uh, in terms of Uh, being set free. He's not praying for his uh, soul. His soul is saved. He's trusted Christ. Verse 24, but I trust in the Lord that I also myself shall come shortly. He prayed for what he hoped for. This is what we need to do. Put it in the Lord's hands and leave it there. I know I need to be reminded of that over and over. Verse 25, yet I suppose it necessary to, to send you Epaphroditus, my brother and companion in labor and fellow soldier, but your messenger that he ministered to my wants. For he longed after you all and was full of heaviness because he had heard that he had been sick. So he's sending Epaphroditus to minister to them. But again, even there in uh, uh, Timothy and Epaphroditus are being sent. I believe we can see Paul, uh, his true church home was in Philippi. He did many missionary uh, ministries, but that was his uh, home uh, church. Verse 27, for indeed he was sick nigh unto death. He's talking about Epaphroditus. But God had mercy upon him, and not only him, but but on me also, lest I should have sorrow upon sorrow. So he's saying, the Lord spared Epaphroditus uh, and helped Paul. If if Epaphroditus had died, Paul would have been... uh, greatly sorrowed. So he believes that the Lord did that uh, as much for Epaphroditus as as, uh, as much for him, Paul himself. You know, <clears throat> he doesn't guarantee that there's no burden too heavy. We can see in 1 Corinthians 10, 13, you know, it, it, what I'm saying is there's no burden too heavy. The Lord can't take it. In 1 Corinthians 10, 13, it says, There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will, with the temptation, also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. See, he knows we're going to have temptation, but uh, this is where people misquote the verse. They'll say, uh, as if it's a Bible verse, the Lord doesn't give you uh, more than you can handle. Well, that's not a Bible verse, but they're, I believe, referring to this verse. <clears throat> and he always gives us a way to handle it in him. But many times we don't, and we don't look to that. Jude, 20, Jude 24 says, Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. See, he's able, and we need to be reminded that whatever we're going through, we need to go to him and look for that way of escape, look for the way out of that temptation so we don't fall. Galatians 6 2 says, Bear ye one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. Now, to bear each other's burdens, we can bear people's infirmities, sicknesses, struggles with sin. There's a lot of things that we can do, uh, and we should. we should learn to help each other and build each other up, not tear each other down. Uh, verse 28, <clears throat> I sent him, therefore, the more carefully, that when you see him again, you may rejoice, and that I may be the less sorrowful. 
Receive him, therefore, in the Lord with all gladness, and hold such in reputation. Because for the work of Christ he was nigh unto death, not regarding his life to supply your lack of service to me. You know, Paul and his fellow laborers, we see them, you know, the Apostle Paul at one point before his death, he says, now I'm being poured out as a drink offering. They poured out their lives in service to the Lord. And that's something that we should do. It's not something we have to do to be saved. Again, the difference between what we should and what we have to do. Are you serving the Lord in some way? He's given you gifts. You can use those gifts to help your local fellowship and work together in the body of Christ. And that's what we should be doing. We'll end there for the week. We'll pick up in Philippians 3 next week. May the Lord bless you with the reading of his word today.